In our recent fast-paced financial heydays, it was normal to endow credit rating agencies with a legitimacy and a power that has since fallen into question, if not outright scrutiny. One of those people leading the scrutiny is um, ESSEC professor of economics, Patricia Langhor, who with her father, INSEAD finance professor, Erwig Langhor, has written a, a book on the subject. It's called The Rating Agencies and Their Credit Ratings, What They Are, How They Work, and why they are relevant. Welcome. Thank you. So we've been working on this book um, for a couple of years, actually, and and our um, and our vision for this book actually came um, after the first uh, um, burst of the bubble with uh, the Enron and the WorldCom. And uh, rating agencies tend to come in the spotlight uh, very often uh, with these bubbles. And uh, what we noticed is that. Um, Credit ratings are ubiquitous, they're arcane, and uh, they trigger tremendous transfers of wealth um, when they come into play. They've lost a lot of credibility. You mentioned two big cases. Right now, a lot of the mortgage-backed securities were rated AAA. Clearly, that was a mess. What's going to make them a little more credible? What will make them more credible is the, the usage of the ratings in a more um, diligent way. So we tend to take uh, ratings at their face value and um, to make decisions based solely on the ratings. And this um, definitely has led us in the wrong directions. And the credibility um, will come with uh, better regulations and better quality ratings and uses uh, over time. What is a credit rating really? How should you use it? Was it overemphasized recently in the last bubble and in other things that you've just pointed out? We believe that credit ratings are not uh, accurately understood. And what a credit rating really is, is a benchmark measure of a probability of default. And, and more than that, it, we realized that its use over time um, gave it more role than, than just this uh, measure. And it really has three, three different roles. And they are, first, they are the measure of probability of default. And moreover, they're used to compare products um, across segments. So uh, a corporate bond, a uh, rating of a corporate bond in a given country in a given segment is, um, means the same uh, um, means the same as uh, a rating of the same level, say, uh, a double A in another country, in another type of bond, in another segment. And uh, rating agencies work extremely hard to make that uh, comparison possible. And last but not least, what, di what differentiates them from, say, CDS swaps or um, other market implied ratings is the fact that they're contractable. They're very visible and you can verify at a given point in time uh, what that credit rating will be. And because of that, many regulations are based on credit ratings, many contracts use ratings as triggers, and many investors um, have investment guidelines based on ratings. So whenever a rating moves, uh, eventually a lot of capital uh, will move directly when the uh, rating changes. What skill sets are necessary to be, a, to be working in this, in this arena, the credit rating arena? So most of all, I would say the, um, uh, a really the profound um, uh, will and uh, to get the rating right. Really, what really drives these uh, analysts is to get the rating right. So they are not um, uh, typically commercially driven. Um, they don't wield uh, very high salaries, uh, at least compared to their opportunity cost in investment banking. And they really have an atmosphere of um, colle quite collegial atmosphere of analysis. So I would say it's really analytical power and in independence of mind. Do credit rating agencies ever refuse to rate something or should they in the future refuse to rate more things to say, we don't know enough about this yet? Yes, that is really the key to what should happen. Uh, is I, I believe that they will gain their credibility once they dare say no to, the, to rating um, a specific product now. Because this is one of the problems uh, with, uh, with bubbles, for instance, and especially with the structured finance segment, is that the short-term interest of rating a little more uh, 
uh, even if the information was not sufficient good, was um, at the end w was affecting their bottom line more than their long run reputation. And their long run reputation will only come back once they dare, dare say, no, we're not rating you, we don't have enough um, information and our reputation is at stake, we cannot do it. But that will only happen if investors um, really um, monitor the reputation and how good the rating agencies uh, are. And, and use other barometers for their own investment. Exactly, and that only will happen if uh, regulators don't certify the rating agencies. And I'm very concerned about some of the regulation coming out. Can you give me an example? I mean, it's still in flux, so. Exactly, it's still in flux, and there's been uh, excellent proposals, uh, for instance, by the SEC to, um, to take away references from uh, uh, references of ratings in their um, in the, uh, most of their regulations, and uh, but uh, Europe was on a good track with a with a code of conduct and not too intrusive, no uh, certification, and now they've come up with regulation that is much more intrusive, and certainly uh, we need to monitor the rating agency closely, but certifying it gives a false sense of security to investors, and what we really want is investors rating the rating agencies. That goes back to an inherent conflict of interest in the way the agencies are set up in the first place. Exactly. I mean, who pays them? The, uh, the issuers. The issuers, exactly. So hmm. you pay the one who's supposed to, uh, to give you a grade or to rate you. That comes back from the, from the mid-70s, actually, where the business model before was based on uh, investors paying the uh, rating agencies. And um, so there was a problem with that, is that obviously the willingness to pay for an, for an investor for rating is much lower than uh, an issuer's willingness to pay. An investor, if he doesn't have a rating on a given company, he will just uh, invest in another company that has a rating. And uh, whereas an issuer, if he has no rating, he cannot go on the capital markets. So um, uh, rating agencies needed more money for more um, thorough analysis and um, capital markets could not function with secret ratings that would become public uh, after five, maybe say, a couple of key investors had the ratings and you would see in the prices that ratings uh, would be revealed. So the investor pays models is not sustainable and the issuer, pay, issuer pays for the rating um, has its problems and but in the corporate uh, segment it has actually worked really well when you look at the performance um, statistics it has worked well in the past except when you get into um, into uh, into bubbles and one of the dangers that has occurred is that nationally rated statistical organizations so that S&P, uh, Moody's and Fitch were protected uh, because of these regulations and um, based on on these uh, firms, they weren't too worried about their demand. There's only three firms who rate uh, all the bonds outstanding in the world. So obviously they're not too worried about losing their business. And, um, but the threat of having new, uh, in new uh, rating agencies coming in is really what should maintain pressure on them on performing well. And do you think that's what's going to happen? What, I mean, what do you see down the road for credit? Yes, rating? I think uh, this is uh, what should be happening. And we've seen new uh, nationally rated statistical organizations, but that will only happen if, um, if we give them sufficient room. And if, um, they get uh, enough opportunities uh, to rate um, to rate uh, issues. So it's not sure if if regulators protect the incumbents too much. Say uh, now with the European regulation or with uh, capital requirements directives that are based on some uh, ratings, and these ratings have to be from the three or four main ones. Well, that protects the market too much, and it will depend if investors make really start seeing, well, uh, S&P, okay, we feel secure, many other investors use S&P, but maybe, maybe we should look at these other rating agencies and what they have to offer. But it requires a lot of homework. It would be interesting to see how that plays out. Yes. Thank you very much, Patricia. Thank you.